Hello, God bless from Up Ministries. It's me, Dick Jr. I am coming to you today to read you John chapter 13. Uh, this is Jesus' Last Supper. So uh, that's where we're at in John. Um, I prayed. I asked God to help me speak with you today before I started this video. And I suggest that you also pray anytime you place yourself in God's Word and ask Him for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding specifically. Uh, and he's going to give them to you because he does not want us to be in the dark about his word or anything to do with it. So uh, he's going to give them to you. And the reason I'm telling you to pray these things is because uh, the Apostle Paul prayed uh, these things also in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 16, 17. You can find that. And in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, you can find two places where Paul prayed a prayer uh, about the knowledge of Jesus and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Okay? So. Those things being said, uh, I also suggest, though, that you, excuse me, that you go to God with anything in prayer. But not just the bad things, go with the good things. Thank Him for the food, thank Him for your paycheck, thank Him for the house, for the roof over your head, thank Him for all these things, whatever. But, uh, um, you know, these prayers I can't make a guarantee on like I can for the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But I can promise you this, God's a prayer answering God. How can I make that promise? Because I've seen prayers answered, mine and other people's answered with my very own eyes. I've seen prayers answered, okay? But not just that. This book that I'm reading to you is full of prayers, just like the two that I gave you, okay? And those are answered, or many of those are answered, okay? Do I know which ones God's going to answer? No, I have no idea. I mean, I can give you a basic framework or just make sure it's not a, against anything that, you know, he finds sinful or, you know, I mean, anything that he finds wrong or offensive or is not going to hurt anybody or, you know, those types of things. First, you can just eliminate those types of prayers because God's not, uh, he's not your revenge factor or you see what I mean? Anyway, I can't make guarantees on prayers except, uh, you know, bad prayers, <laughs> but uh, I can tell you this, he's a prayer answering God and he's going to answer your prayers. But the thing is this, and this is scriptural. If you don't ask, you won't receive. Okay? So go to him in prayer and talk to him. Okay? You might just find out he answers some of your prayers. And it's the worst thing that can happen. So, those things being said, I am going to go ahead and get started here in uh, um, John chapter 13. It's not a super long read. Uh, it's like two pages, basically, which is a normal chapter. What I consider normal, which is four Bible columns. is seems about normal. So anyway, uh, now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During the supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come forth from God and was going back to God, got up from supper and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. I circled that. That goes for all of us. If Jesus doesn't wash us, then we have no part with him. Okay? And that's, I know that's figuratively, but, uh, you know, it's also spiritually. And, uh, yeah, that's why. And you cleanse in the blood of Jesus. If I don't wash you, I have no part of you. Okay? Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He who has bathed, bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you are clean. But not all of you, sorry. For he knew that one who, the one who was betraying him, for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I gave you an example that you also should do as I do to you, as I did to you. And I circled that right there, okay? Jesus gives us an example all the way around. His complete example from teaching men about the Word of God, okay, all the way to washing the feet. Okay, it's not just about washing feet. The example that I gave, he gave us is way bigger than feet washing. Okay, if that's all you glean from that, then uh, glean a little more. Okay, I'm not going to say you're wrong, but I'm going to say glean a little more. Because Jesus said, I gave you an example. His whole life, his whole ministry, everything he does, all the way through this book, this Bible. Okay, that's, that's what he did. Okay, so then we have to try to do that. Okay, and be like him. That's the whole point of this. <clears throat> Okay. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I circled that. You are blessed if you do them. If you know them, you are blessed if you do them. You see that statement? Knowing them ain't enough. Doing them is where you find the blessing. Okay? I do not speak of all of you I know the ones I have chosen but it is that the scripture may be fulfilled he who eats my bread has lifted his heel up against me from now on I am telling you before it comes to pass so that when it does occur you may believe that I am he truly truly I say to you he who receives whomever I send receives me and he who receives me receives him who sent me when Jesus had said this he became troubled in spirit and testified and said truly truly I say to you that one of you will betray me the disciples began looking at one another at a loss to know of which one he was speaking there was reclining on Jesus his bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved so Simon Peter gestured to him and said to him tell us what is it what it is of whom he is speaking who so tell us who it is of whom he is speaking he leaning back on Jesus's bosom said to him Lord who is it Jesus answered that is the one from whom for whom I shall dip the morsel and give it to him so when he had dipped the morsel he took and gave it to Judas the son of Simon Iscariot after the morsel, Satan then entered into him. Therefore, Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. Now no, one of the, now, no one of those reclining at the table knew for what purpose he had said this to him. For some were supposing, because Judas had the money box, that Jesus was saying to him, Buy the things we have need of for the feast, or else that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel, he went out immediately, and it was night. Therefore, when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will, glory, and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I circled that. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Not if you run around saying, I'm a Christian. I proclaim Christ. You don't have to tell them. Show them. That's what Jesus tells us to do. By this, not by your mouth, by your actions. Stop talking about it, Christians. Be about it. All right? Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I go, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me later. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you right now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? 
Truly, truly, I say to you, a rooster will not crow until you deny me three times. And that is John chapter 13. Thanks for listening and God bless.